So, I created this format to be a bit looser than my usual videos, mostly so I could talk about the Dragon Age 4 teaser, but I'm also going to be using it to occasionally talk about lore theories. So I'm dusting off an old one. This one is about how the ancient elves and dragons are related. To be clear, this theory is not about the Forgotten Ones. Now, Solas tells us that the Ebonurus came to be because of a war. They were war leaders, then respected elders, and ultimately came to be worshipped as gods. We also know they went to war with the Titans beneath the earth at some point, but that would have been much later. All the references to that conflict make it sound like the Evanuris were already worshipped as gods when it started. Though it's possible those were written in hindsight, I don't think that's the case. What I'm interested in here is the war that started their rise to power, for which we don't have any explicit references beyond Solus's line. Now, we know that the writers of Dragon Age like to play with the idea of history getting warped and misunderstood in the retelling, particularly where the ancient elves are concerned. So without further ado, I want to share a little from the Dalish legend of Elgernan. The sun, looking down upon the fruitful land, saw the joy that Elgernan took in her works and grew jealous. Out of spite, he shone his face full upon all the creatures the earth had created and burned them all to ash. The land cracked and split from bitterness and pain and cried salt tears for the loss of all she had wrought. The pool of tears cried for the land became the ocean, and the cracks in her body the first rivers and streams. Elgernan was furious at what his father had done and vowed vengeance. He lifted himself into the sky and wrestled the sun, determined to defeat him. They fought for an eternity, and eventually the sun grew weak, while Elgernan's rage was unabated. Eventually, Elgernan threw the sun down from the sky and buried him in a deep abyss created by the land's sorrow. With the sun gone, the world was covered in shadow, and all that remained in the sky were the reminders of Elgernan's battle with his father, drops of the sun's lifeblood which twinkled and shimmered in the darkness. Okay, the Dalish obviously have things in here like Elgernan being the primordial offspring of the sun and the earth that doesn't jive with what we know about the Evanuris, but what I want to focus on here is that Elgernan is fighting a fiery airborne enemy, and then imprisons it beneath the earth. Now, Dragon Age does have a story about some dragons being sealed beneath the earth, the old gods of Tevinter. But also the great dragons we hear Yavanna talking about in the Silent Grove, though that was supposed to be to protect them. Now, the Codex entry for the Dalish Legend of Mithal has this to say about the sun's imprisonment. Elgernan had defeated his father, the sun, and all was covered in darkness. Pleased with himself, Elgernan sought to console his mother, the Earth, by replacing all the sun had destroyed, but the Earth knew that without the sun nothing could grow. She whispered to Elgernan this truth and pleaded with him to release his father, but Elgernan's pride was great and his vengeance was terrible and he refused. It was at this moment that Mithal walked out of the Sea of the Earth's Tears and onto the land. She placed her hand on Elgernan's brow, and at her touch he grew calm, and knew that his anger had led him astray. Humbled, Elgernan went to the place where the sun was buried and spoke to him. Elgernan said he would release the sun if the sun promised to be gentle and return to the earth each night. The sun, feeling remorse for what he had done, agreed. Now there's a bit here about the earth suffering without the sun. We don't really know much about how dragons fit into the story of Thetis. They often appear as savage beasts, but with shades of intelligence, and they are clearly highly magical creatures. Perhaps more than even the ancient elves, much about them remains ambiguous. So perhaps imprisoning the dragons and bringing them to near extinction had greater consequences than we know. Then came Mithal, interceding on behalf of the sun and encouraging mercy. We know from cryptic codex entries from the Temple of Mithal that the form of a dragon was considered divine, and something perhaps all Evanuris could turn into, but Mithal in particular is closely linked to dragons in her iconography. Where Andruil is represented by a sacred hare or hawk or owl, Durthamen is represented with a bear, Mithal is explicitly represented with a dragon and seems more closely linked to them than the others. 
Perhaps the reason why is because Mithal interceded with Elgernan for the defeated dragons, allowing the lesser dragons to roam the earth, while the greatest of them remained imprisoned. Well, that's my theory. It's a bit of crackpot without much hard evidence, but I think it fits what we do know. Part of the reason I like the idea, to be honest, is just that I don't like the idea of the old gods being the forgotten ones or the physical forms of the Evanuris or whatever. I just don't want all the answers to the ancient lore mysteries of Thetis to be the elven gods, you know? Also, a little announcement, I'm going to be taking a break from videos for the next two weeks, mostly because I'm going to be playing Anthem and deciding whether I like the lore well enough to make some videos on it. Anyway, that's all for now. Have a nice day.